last part is I want to talk about the reproductive testing options. So there's two types of testing. You can do testing during your pregnancy, or you can do what's called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, which is screening embryos before pregnancy. So there's two types of prenatal diagnosis procedures. One of them is called a CDS, or chorionic villus sampling. Um, this is performed at around 11 to 13 weeks gestation. And what's done is using a catheter through the through the cervix or a needle through the abdomen to take a little bit of the placenta because the cells that are in the placenta are the same cells that, that made the baby. So if you test the genetic makeup of those placental cells, you're getting, you're getting a sense of what the baby cells would be. Um, it's very, very accurate. They'd be directly testing for the deletion so they can tell you yes or no, did the, was the deletion passed on. There is a risk of miscarriage. That's about one in 200 or possibly less. It depends on which hospital you're going to, the law quote are different rates, but it's less than 1% chance, but not zero. And then there's a, a, light, a later procedure called an amniocentesis, and amniocentesis was available first. So CBS has been available for about 20 years, amnio has been available for about 40 years. Um, and this is performed a little bit later in the second trimester, between 16 to 20 weeks. And it's the same idea, which is getting cells from the pregnancy, but instead of taking the placenta, they're taking a little bit of the amniotic fluid because that contains cells from the fetus. And then they can test those, again, directly for the deletion. So it's very accurate, and there's a small risk of miscarriage about the same, or maybe a little bit lower risk than with CDS. So again, the, the advantage is that it's very accurate. You're going to know for sure would, there, would the child have the deletion or not. The, the drawbacks, one is drawback that there is nothing we can do to fix the deletion. So at this point, the pregnancy is ongoing, the option would be to terminate the pregnancy which is an ideal. Sometimes it's the lesser of two of two evils, and it's always a difficult decision, I think, for couples deciding what to do about pregnancy planning, but it's important to know that this is, a, this is an option, something to be considered. And another, of course, challenge is just that we can't predict what the baby or the, who would then become a child and adult, what how severe their disease would be based just on the genetics. And it can vary even within a family. So that can be difficult. A newer technology is something called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD. This is performed in conjun conjunction with in vitro fertilization. We need a lot of acronyms today. I realize CDS, PGD, IVF. Um, so in vitro fertilization is where you basically you're going to take use ovulation and use hormones to stimulate ovulation in in the woman. So she produces a lot of eggs. So you take the eggs from her. You take the sperm from the husband in the lab. You mix them up, and they make a bunch of early embryos. And then when the embryos are a few days old, so when they're maybe uh, eight cells or bigger, they pluck off one or two cells from each early embryo and then can do genetic testing on those cells. Because the genetic makeup of those few cells makes reflects the genetic makeup of the embryo as a whole. And it's really incredible they can do this without damaging the embryo. This is a, a sh looking under the microscope and showing you how they can pluck off just one cell without damaging the embryo. It's really incredible. If you Google this online, you can actually see videos of how it, like, in real time, the cells coming off, it's very neat. So, and then only the embryos that didn't have the genetic marker would be transferred into the woman's uterus. So the advantage of PGD is, is that it's a way of um, increasing the chances of an unaffected child before the pregnancy really even begins in the woman's uterus. But it's not perfect, and it's, it's especially difficult with FFH. So why? I'm going to tell you why, yeah. So one of the challenges with FSH is that you need a lot of DNA in order to test for the deletion directly. You can't get enough DNA from a single or even just a few cells. So with PGD for FSH, they can't directly test for the deletion, so they use something called linkage, which is basically they test for markers located nearby the D4, Z4 region. So showing down here this little blue chromosome and this red chromosome, I sort of cherry rigged this diagram. I hope that makes sense. So this blue chromosome has the deletion, whereas the red chromosome is normal. And what they do is they find a marker, basically a DNA sequence nearby that tracks with the deletion. So they can establish in a family that the big B marker is on the chromosome with the deletion, whereas the little B marker is on the normal chromosome. So then in the embryo, Rather than testing to see does the embryo have the deletion or not, they would be testing to see does the embryo have the big B or the little B. 
But in order to do this linkage, in order to figure out which markers track with the deletion, they usually need multiple affected family members. So you usually need to have an affected parent, maybe affected siblings to compare to. And so remember how I said about 30% of cases of FSH are due to de novo deletions. So people who are the first affected individuals in the family whose parents don't have the deletion, at least at this point in time, PGD really isn't an option because they just can't link, do the linkage test. How, how much of family do you need, like mom, dad, brother? I'm not sure exactly. I think you need at least one other affected person in the family. Um, the, the labs and the centers that do PGD, they want to do a, either an in-person or a phone consultation um, with an interested couple to talk more about the nitty gritty and they would probably get blood samples from a couple different people to see if they can track it. Um, but I think you need at least one other person in the family. And is this something that insurance companies? Uh, another good question. So insurance coverage for PGE and IVF, it really varies. Um, so if you were to pay out of pocket, this is very expensive. The IVF, you have, because there's the IVF cost, which is probably $10,000 per cycle, and then the PGD is probably three or so thousand dollars per cycle. Um, so some insurances do cover it, so I don't want to give anybody the impression that it's not covered, but there are some insurances don't cover it, or it might only be in, for certain conditions. And I've also come across the experience where the insurance will cover the PGE, but they won't cover the IVF unless you have infertility, which is absurd because you can't do PGD without the IVF part of it. Drives me crazy. I had arguments with them over this, but we're very sorry about it. We, we did the... The, uh, uh, the IVF which was covered, but we testing was all available. So it's the other way around for you. So so IVF covered, but PGD not. Yeah. So it totally depends on your insurance policy. Thank you. Yeah. But um, but I always encourage it, my patients who are considering PGD to not to, con to consider it as an option to look into it. Some people say, oh God, I'm sure it's expensive. My insurance won't cover it. I can't do it. Don't. I mean, if this is something that you're thinking about, talk to your insurance company, have a consultation with the fertility center and the PGE center um, because there might be a way and it might be covered. So another um, challenge with PGD and FSH is that it's not quite as accurate because they're not testing directly for the deletion, they're doing linkage and the marker, there's a chance of a combination between the marker and between the deletion. So this little diagram here, again, it's showing our situation on the top where the B, big B is like the deletion and little B is linked with a normal chromosome. But when we uh, pass our chromosomes on, they actually cross over and recombine. It's how our genes shuffle. And that's why your child doesn't look exactly like you. It looks like a combination of, of the both parents and the two siblings are identical because there's a sort of rearranging of the gene. So if there's a recombination event between the marker and the deletion, it's going to be inaccurate. So if they test the embryo and say, well, we put in the embryo with the little b because it's not linked to the deletion, but if there is a crossing over that, it actually would be the chromosome with the deletion. So it's, um, it, again, it depends on the center. You should, they will give you their exact, what they estimate their accuracy to be. But it's probably about, there's a 5% chance-ish of recombination. So they would recommend doing a CVS or amnio anyways to confirm and make sure that um, that the fetus doesn't have the deletion. So I think that's my last slide about reproductive options, but um, I would love to take questions or comments from you about any of, and what I just went over. Yeah. 